this on behalf of the Environment Directorate. I, my view is that we have invested a huge amount in the carbon cycle over the last 20 years. It is well time to invest the same attention in our intervention in the nitrogen cycle, which is two orders of magnitude bigger uh, in terms of the relationship to the natural flux than, uh, than uh, carbon. I, I, this is, I think, I mean, the European nitrogen assessment, I think, is a superb piece of work. It's a, it's, it really does show the way, but the rest of the world's got to catch up and everyone's got to do something about it. Um, so the rest of the report, uh, half of the 350-odd pages, is about what to do about it. And I'll be very quick here. Uh, because you only wanted me to speak for 20 minutes, and I fear I'm close to that. Look, obviously, with this audience, I start with this one, value and price, the natural assets and ecosystem services. Uh, by one means or another, and what Pavan says about not monetizing everything in a sort of supermarket sense, but by one means or another, the actual consequences of not doing this need to be made clear to people. There are real economic consequences of ruining your biodiversity, wrecking your atmospheric uh, balance, uh, ruining your biodiversity. Uh, and once you understand that, then you have to find ways of valuing and pricing those assets and ecosystem services. Uh, and, 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 and there is an encouraging amount of work. Through the team, it's, it started a, a, a much higher level of activity. It's certainly one of the areas we want to expand on the OECD. Secondly, remove environmentally harmful subsidies. This one is just so obvious. You know, here we are saying, you know, we really don't want to see too much more carbon in the atmosphere. Meanwhile, we're spending, at the global level, the thick end of half a trillion dollars making carbon cheaper. And it's not all in developing countries because the OECD, for the first time, has made an estimate of support measures of both for production and consumption in OECD countries and come up with a figure somewhere between 45 and 75 billion rich countries. Okay? So this is... This is Absolutely basic, and this has to be a powerful message to the ministers when they meet at the end of next week. Thirdly, devise effective regulations and standards. Self-explanatory, I won't uh, say any more about that. Make pollution more costly. Again, very familiar. If you don't want a thing, not only don't subsidise it, make it more expensive. Uh, we keep collecting good policy examples where it's worked, and we just wish we could persuade everyone else to do it. Uh, and finally... Uh, encourage green innovation and governments do have a role there but quite frankly do the first four <laughs> and the incentive will be orders of magnitude more powerful than anything governments can ever afford. Finally just a snapshot of what's happening to biodiversity related aid I thought you might be interested in this because one of the things governments can do is uh, developed country governments can do is to devote more of their, their official uh, development assistance uh, to um, uh, to biodiversity, and here's some work we've done with our Development Assistance Committee looking at uh, biodiversity uh, ODA expenditure related to uh, significant objectives in terms of, of the, 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 the conventions, the world signed, uh, Convention of Biological Diversity, and principal objectives, and then adding the two together. And, you know, it's not princely, but it is encouraging. There has been uh, an increase in investment by uh, OECD uh, countries through their development assistance programs, and we can only hope that that continues. So that is uh, all I wanted to say to you. That's just a taste. You can find uh, the uh, report at that uh, link there. Um, I would encourage you um, to, to look at it. And in the spirit of one of Pavan's very final comments, where he said that one of the most important communication exercises we have to undertake is to get to business people and get to the, the business and commercial community I'm not staying with you for this conference. I'm leaving tomorrow to fly to New York to give this address, but across all four themes, to an audience in Wall Street. Um, because I actually think we have to start talking to the people who are actually mobilizing those trillions of dollars uh, and sensitize them to some of what is at stake. Thanks. And I'd like to hand you this little remembrance. The, oh. the cup is pretty self-explanatory. I mean, we can do some environmental good by reducing waste. What I'd like to briefly mention also to the rest of the audience is the little thing we put inside the cup because it might serve as a symbol for what we're talking about. This is a local pastry, and it's called Leipzig Lark. Lark from Leipzig. Now, 
nowadays it's made of almonds and, and nuts and strawberry in a, in a crumb crust, crust. But it used to, it, it, it's a substitute product for something that was consumed here before in enormous uh, quantities, which were skylarks. In 1720, they killed, hunted over 400,000 skylarks in the area of, of Leipzig, in the flood plains around here, and sold them. They had quite a market, not only at the Leipzig fairs, but also um, in a regional market. And then increasingly, bird protectors um, increased their pressure, and by 1876, the Saxonian king prohibited further hunting of larks. And then there were some innovative business people, bakers, and they made <coughs> the larks out of dough. And they used to have a much more, um, much more resemblance, so this has been simplified and rationalized over time. Circular <laughs> lark. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does have a, a, a two, two ties across, which yes. are representing the strings that were b uh, binding the filled, the stuffed glass. So for the merchants here, and to a certain extent, again, for the regional markets, they replaced the Skylarks by pastry. So that, I think, can serve as an example of the economics of biodiversity <laughs> and <laughs> for you to remember. Thank you very much, Simon. And now I'd like to come to the final part of this um, first opening session. We have, besides Pavan, some of the TIB Advisory Board members here, and I'd like to ask three of them to join us up here. That's, uh, I'll start with Ladislav Niko, now um, Deputy Director General of DG Sanko, which stands for Health and, and Consumers, the food is not in the title, but it has a lot to do with the food, the food safety. Formerly, he was with the Biodiversity and Nature and uh, Land Use Directorate. So he's been with TEAB long before it was called TEAB. So please. Then I have Herman Mulder, who's been a banker for most of his life and has contributed significantly to the initiative of the equator principles coming into, into being, which is a set of principles agreeing on um, social and uh, particularly also environmental impacts in the investment world. And as Pavan put it so nicely today, now he's a world connector. And then, unlike what it says in the program where we had announced Julia, Martin Lefebvre from IUCN, uh, we have Jackie McLeod, who will also give a keynote address tomorrow, and but she'll join us right now in this panel. And she heads the, as most of you are, I'm sure are aware, the environmental, um, European Environmental Agency. Now, if I could have one more chair, please, then I'll sit with you. Okay, so in the meantime, I came into the, the TEAB initiative in November 2007 for the, for the second meeting at the EC. It was not called TEAB in that time. It was called the Stern-like Biodiversity Exercise, but don't call it that. <laughs> but I'd first of all like to ask Ladislav, who's known this initiative from before even those times, and to tell us a little bit about where does it come from? What were the intentions? What were the expectations? Right. First of all, good evening to everybody and thank you for the invitation. It's very interesting because I was going to many conferences always as a young scientist and now I am asked for the memories. Huh? It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> interesting thing. Uh, actually, uh, for me, it all started in Curitiba, in COP, where we went with a delegation of the environmental commissioner and some of my colleagues and we were discussing what to do with the whole UN system which was not very much delivering for biodiversity. It was a lot of discussion, a lot of proposals, but nothing was really actually happening. And, and that was actually in time when Stern study was in air and 
I was asking commissioner, what if we do something like Stalin? We, we need to convince the, the, the economists 